Hello everyone, my name is Mohammed, and this is a tutorial video about the five MIPS instruction steps for the multi-cycle data path implementation. Uh, so pretty much these five steps are going to be used in the multi-cycle data path implementation and in the future when you study pipelining they're also going to be very important there. So um, all in all this is you know a very important concept to understand and it's essential for understanding how instructions are executed and how they go about moving throughout the data path. So uh, we're going to go into detail about each one of these, but let me just list them all for you so you know what we're going into. Uh, the very first step is in called instruction fetch. The second step is called instruction decode and register fetch. Uh, the third step is called execution, branch completion, or memory address computation, and you're going to find out why I'm saying or in a little bit. And the fourth step is called memory access, and finally the last one is memory read completion, or sometimes called write back. So uh, this is how the uh, multi-cycle data path implementation looks like, and the differences between this and the single uh, single cycle implementation. Uh, for the purpose of this, of this video, I'm just going to describe you know the important parts. And pretty much, you have we added five registers, temporary registers, and these act as registers that hold data in between these steps. So the very first one is called instruction register, and it, you know it's IR, and so the name fits. And obviously, this holds instructions from the memory, and it gets stored in here, so it can be used on later on. The second one is MDR. This stands for Memory Data Register, and as the name says, it holds memory from the data and is stored in here for you know for the for the next uh, step. Then you have A and B. These hold you know RS and RT respectively, and this is I guess from the register file it goes into A and B, and is you know it's like a loading dock to be ready to be used in, you know into the ALU. And finally, you have ALU out, which stores the output of the ALU operation. And for example, if you have 1 plus 1, then this was stored too. So whenever you hear me say IR equals something, that means something is getting stored into this IR. And when I say A equals something, that means I'm storing something into this A, and etc. So the very first instruction uh, step is called instruction fetch. And the basic purpose of this step is to get the instruction from memory, and you do this by you go into the memory through the address PC which you already have. So I'm I open the door to memory and I'm like, okay, I have this address PC. I look at this address and I have an instruction. So then I take this instruction and I store it into instruction register IR, which is the temporary one we just discussed. So I just took that instruction out of the memory. I just you know, went into the memory, got that instruction, put it in IR, and then I increment PC by 4 to get ready for the next instruction. Uh, something important here is that you do not have any idea what the um, what the instruction is. Imagine if you uh, went to your mailbox and you picked out an envelope. Um, at this stage, you have an open envelope. You just have the envelope in your, in your hand. So this is pretty much the same thing going on here. You really don't know what the instruction is. This is where this step comes in. The second step is called instruction decode and register fetch. Uh, so pretty much, I'll take you through the steps of these. Pretty much it goes in and it takes RS, which is 25 to 21, RS through the register file and it stores it in A. And then it takes RT through the register file and stores it in B. So now what you just did is that you fetched the registers from the register file and put them in these temporary registers. And then the next step is that it, it computes the branch address. Now this is done just in case because you know you have the envelope and it may not be a branch you know, instruction but you're doing it anyway just to save time for the future you know, and it doesn't hurt anybody. So what this does is that you take your PC, which is uh, your, cur your current address, and you add to that the sign extended and shifted immediate and then you store that into ALU out. So essentially you're just in case it's a branch, the branch target is already computed and ready in ALU out for you, you know, ready to go. And the purpose of doing all these things just in case is, you know, just you, you know you may not need RS and RT specifically or ALU out um, to have the branch computation, but you do it anyway. That way you save time in the future. 
Now, at this stage, at the end of stage two, and at the beginning of stage three, is when you finally know what instruction you have. And so this, as you can see in step three, we have it, it's kind of a fork in the road in a sense that every single instruction goes through step one and step two the same way. And as soon as you hit step three, you're like, okay, I finally know what instruction I have. So you do different operations depending on, you know, the, the instruction type. So over here we have the, the main four, uh, R-type, memory reference, branch, and jump instruction. So if you have an R-type, all that is, you, you want to execute this R-type instruction. So it's A operation B. So it's A plus B or A minus B. And then you store that into LU app. So let me show you how that looks in the data path. So you have RS stored over here in A, and you have RT stored over here in B. So you set ALU source A, which is this signal to this multiplexer, and you set it to 1. So you go in here, and you pop A into ALU. Okay, and then you set ALU source B, as you can see here, this signal. You set it to 0, so you can get access to B, and you pop B in here. So you have A and B, and then depending on the operation, you do that operation, and bam, you have ALU out holding the output of the LU operation. So if this was 1 and 1, so this would be 1 plus 1, and bam, you just store 2 in here. So now this is for R-type. So now if it was a load word or store word, what you need to do is that you need to compute uh, the memory address of where you want to go. Because if it's a load word, I want to peek into the memory and grab something. And if it's a store word, I want to write something there. But the whole purpose of this step is to fundamentally just compute where that address is in the first place. So over here you have your current register. For example, um, if you're adding uh, 16 to register 8. So this would be a register right here. And you add the sign extended immediate. So now this right here is the brand new memory address. And you, add, you put that into ALU out. So if, if, if this was a load word or store word, you now have the, the memory address of what you need to do stored in ALU app. I'm sure how that looks in, uh, in the multi-cycle data path. Again, so A is your register. It's in there. And you take the immediate, you sign extend it, and you put it into this multiplexer, and you set your ALU source B to 2. So you take the specific signal, and you pu put it in here. And then 0, 0 over here denotes adding. So you add A plus the sign extended immediate and you start an ALU out. Just as you did with the R type. So now the last, uh, the last two uh, cases are branch and jump. And both of these cases, at the end of step three, they're pretty much complete. So over here, for example, R type, when you did this, you're not really done with the R type instruction. You still have more steps to go. With the memory reference, you, as soon as you get to this part, you're not really done. But with the branch and jump, you're pretty much done. So if you look at the, the branch, for example, we're going to do you know, B, B, Q, or branch if equal. So if A and B are equal, you set your PC equals to the ALU out. Now, what, remember what we said? This ALU out, we computed in step two just in case it was a branch. This is where this comes in. You, you put this just in case branch that we did before, you put it into the PC if A and B are the same. How this looks? You use the ALU to compare. And over here, like I said, you have A and B. It goes in here. The ALU can be used to compare. And how this works is that if they're the same or if they're not the same, depending on, you know, B, Q, or, or B, N, E, um, the zero signal over here would act as, you know, it would tell you the difference of whether it worked or not. And so we already have ALU out here holding the, um, the branch address. So you take this, you go into one and you pop this all the way back to PC. So if A equals B, this zero signal will tell you and allow this signal to get written back over here into PC. Otherwise, the signal is still going back over here, but it's not, allowing, it's not allowed to write into PC, therefore nothing happens. So this allows you to do the branch. Finally, for this jump instruction, all you do is pretty much you replace uh, your PC by the jump address. And again, if you look over here, you have your jump address coming in through there and you set your PC source to 2 and you bring it all the way back to PC. So at the end of this step, you know where you are, you've used your optimistic uh, you know, steps from before to aid you and pretty much we've crossed out branch, 
We've crossed out jump because we're already done with those at this point. But we still have R type, load word, and store word. So now we look at step four. So these are the what we have left. So now let's, it's called memory access or R type completion. So if you look at R type, you just did A plus B, for example, and you stored an ALU out. Now what you need to do is store what you have in ALU out, put it into your destination register, which is 1511 right here. This stands for RD. So you take what you wrote. Uh, sorry, you take what you computed, you put it into RD, and there you go. R type is now complete. A plus B is now stored in RD. There you go. And if it was a store word, you you just computed your um, your uh, memory address of where you want to go. So what you do is that you go into the memory through this specific address that you just computed, and you set that equal to B. So as you can see, we used it before in step three. We computed that address. However, over here, we go into the memory using that address, and we and we store the word B. Pretty simple. Um, and over here, finally, for a load word, it'll take one more step. But so, like I said, you go into the memory through that memory address that you computed, and then you. So, for example, if um, that address had the number two, so I went in there and I saw a two. So now I want to take this two and store it into the memory data register. And because, you know, the fact that I went into the memory, I have to put it into the memory data register to be able to do anything with it later on. So this is why the load word command takes the longest out of all the basic commands. Because at this point, the R type instruction is done, store word is done, you already wrote to the memory. And over here, you have your load word, which is left, and you peek in, you store that into MDR. And it is important to note that when you write to the to the register file the write happens at the end of the clock cycle this will be useful later on for pipelining and stuff but you know it's it's, it's important to, to note it here so finally your uh, fifth and final step for load word in the basic case is, is uh, write back and so I peeked into the memory okay I peeked into the memory and I got to and I put it into MDR now I just have to put it back into the into the register file so I'm loading what I had from MDR put it into the register file so as you can see uh, this step is done by uh, load word alone and load word takes the longest out of all the basic instructions uh, this took five steps uh, store word and R type took four steps and branch and jump took um, three steps so as you can see it depends on the instruction type so pretty much to recap all of this instructions take about three to five steps depending on the type and in the beginning you the hardware really does not have any idea what instruction is dealing with up until the third step so therefore if you think about it like the instruction goes through a road and it hits the first step all instructions do the same thing there it hits the second step all instructions are still on the same road and as soon as you hit the third step that's when you hit the fork in the road and it branches out okay do I have a R type do I have a load word and stuff like that so, uh, and pretty much data is written at the end of the clock cycle, and throughout this entire five-step process, you're doing optimistic things in advance, just in case you need them, but when you do need them, you're very thankful because you just saved yourself a bunch of time. And that's the beauty of this five-step system, and how it works with uh, the multi-cycle data path. So I hope this has helped you understand, um, you know, the multi-cycle data path implementation and how the five-step uh, system works. And... I hope this was uh, helpful to you. Thank you very much.